My Hair Academia, Season 7, like Episode 7. Come down to one thing. We must take our most fearsome enemies and split them Flashback up. to the plan. First. Okay, here we go. Here's the rest of the plan we didn't see. When the villains arrive at our trap, we'll use System Troy to capture them. And then Deku will definitely go to the right free. place. Young Monoma will use Kurogiri's warp quirk. Monoma really having his moment. More than one moment. Shigaraki will be transported to UA's coffin in the sky. <laughs> I like how he acknowledged that. There, young Monoma will copy Aizawa's erasure, ensuring Monoma Shigaraki again. can't use any other quirks in his arsenal. Well, yeah, that'll UA work. Will center around young Midoriya. Also, this will go perfectly. At least Best Genius is there. Endeavor and Hawks are set to lead a highly capable group of heroes against him there. Wow, I didn't realize, some, I somehow missed that Tokuyami was fighting side by side with Hawks. He'll face young Todoroki, Endeavor's sidekicks. Almost like, we're gonna form this battle along thematic lines. Since Himiko Toga and character is arcs. unpredictable opponent, our plan is to isolate her on Okoto Island. Well, they got the Gang unpredictable Orca, part, right? Young Uraraka and young Asui will lead the capture effort, since the girls have previous experience going toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. <laughs> We're gonna form this battle along thematic character lines. All Might has a flair for drama and narrative arcs. You can't forget that Gigantomachia is currently locked down at Jaku Hospital. Who could forget G Gigantomachia? And there you have it. The plan that Tsukauchi, Aizawa, and I devised together. All Might's still finding his heroic role. Our last chance to defeat these enemies. You know how much this means to him, too. It was a really great plan. It almost went perfectly. Except for the unpredictable and wild Toga reaching out to Deku out of the desperation that can only be formed by love. One really cool thing about it is it means Uraka and Deku fighting side by side. It's also really cool to have Shigaraki going against Aizawa, his once favorite hero, who he used to think was cool, and still thinks he's cool, if we're being totally honest. So I'd say all in all, it worked out pretty well for me. Come to think of it, there's something so, I don't know, poignant and painful about the fact that even villains have favorite heroes, even as villains, even with enemies, the human part of them can't help but recognize what we all recognize watching the heroes in the show. It's almost like their their hatred is born out of that like needlepoint pain of love, you know? <laughs> What's the matter? Haters will say those are eye drops from Aqua. Those are actually just tears of joy. We were supposed to create the ideal scenario for Midoriya. Instead, we created the ideal scenario for me, the viewer. <laughs> Midoriya is missing. Step up hey, dynamite. What the hell is to the task. Now? It's an opportunity to step up as heroes and not die. Please don't die. I already lost all once. She's all right. This is a, yeah, this needs to be explained. How the hell? How the hell did he figure this out? Ugh, you're kidding me. This is disgusting. Whoa, what? the hell. As I was Quirk, and also his character, has been such a, a bastion of reliability and trust. His presence just has a way of making everything feel like it's going to be alright. For his Quirk to be overwritten, it's shocking. I haven't blinked yet. It's something different. It's something else. The same way my hair gets longer on my nails. Oh, he's like evolved beyond Quirks. My body had to it's a whole different thing. Form. This is where society is headed. It's a lot of hands. Garaki proposed. I thought it was going to be a future arc, but... Stop talking! It's Great Explosion Murder God Dynamite! And you should stop charging in without a plan! I'm so, glad you're alive. This, you this is the piece of TNT? translation yeah? I'm going to believe. Wanna have a go right here, bunny wabbit? Focus, you two! Ah! Right, yes, it's please, focus. Yes, sir. Lay down the hammer, best genius. Those hands. Eraser! We've got Midori on the line! Damn it, Class A! Get your crap together! Where are you, Midori? Oh, now he wants Class A to shine. <laughs> Monoma can't copy more than one quirk at a time. It would take at least 10 seconds to switch from erasure to warp and bring Midori into the And that leaves Shigaraki location. with a whole range of options. If every one of them is capable of using his decay quirk, we're oh, dead the it's moment over. It's over. is released. It's over. You're gonna have to find a workaround. You're going to have to find a way here on your own. We'll do our best to hold Shigaraki back in the meantime. Very big of them. I think the default there, no surprise that they don't go there, but convincing themselves they can't handle it and make a last bail gambit to get Midoriya and dying. Even without one for all, we can defeat this vile enemy. Yes, yeah. sir. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Best genius. Inflation. Yeah, the Japanese economy is really getting out of hand. <laughs> all for one's plan is a success. Don't ignore the jailbreakers. Keep your eyes open. I just ate that. I think it was nothing. They can't warp me out. I have to get back to UA myself. Things must not be going well there. Then you should hurry. I, I feel like he's needed here. Narratively. No, Izuku, you can't leave. I love you. Okay, if you put it that way. The setting, though. What is it? Tell me what you want from me. Your love. That 
and blood. I want you to be my boyfriend. Is that all? <laughs> sure, uh, that will solve this. Genuine affection. Whenever she hurts someone. Um, yeah, we can ignore that last part and just roll with it. I can change her. Actually, I feel like that's unironically and genuinely and like better than most people a Deku thing. Deku could change her. He would be the one successful counterexample of that. The exception that proves the rule. Izuku Midoriya is the ninth wielder of One for All, a crystallization of powers. This is not how Deku pictured the final battle. You want me to be your boyfriend? Where the heck is this coming from? The anger, he though. He's super strong, but he's still a damned nerd. Oh wow, even the Nad are taking digs after all Deku has done. You were so bloody and broken. In fact, you look just like my first crush. It stirred something deep inside Oof. me. You're so dreamy, Zuku. Come over here. I want to get a taste of your blood. That way I can become you. I got it. I know the solution to Toga's love woes. Introduce her to Mineta. <laughs> Mineta is the one for you. Is this shipping? Am I shipping? Finally, jokes aside. Though I'm dead serious. The reason that came to mind is because, okay, the total bloodlust thing, it's not real, I hope, but there's something that feels real about it. And I think the mental or emotional category it's falling in for me is like extreme taboo lust. It's hard to judge, I think, for the same reason that it's a problem. There are certain elements of sexuality that are often displayed, but at the same time, there's sort of a, a vacuousness to the way it's portrayed. Rarely is a sort of like really, really deep, dark passion and lust that I'm guessing a lot of people experience just don't voice, is not expressed. Thoughts people have in passing that you would never want anyone to know, but are probably very human. I don't want to say this categorically outright because maybe I'll think of exceptions later, but generally I don't think any kind of thought popping up is a bad thing. It's just a thought. The important thing is like how you process the thoughts and then what you do with those thoughts. I don't know, maybe I'm exposing myself here, but like I'm reasonably confident that everybody has inappropriate lustful thoughts at one time or another. And I think because it's something we don't express, it's easy to feel alienated. And then should someone express those things, it would be a very easy point of attack. By the way, this is not at all meant to be a justification for Toga and her character and her killing, but just trying to find an equivalent for this misunderstood thing in childhood that would start to like spiral inward and get warped. Don't you think this is all moving way too fast? My boyfriend, you mean like we would go to an amusement park and hold hands and share a creep and do date kind of stuff? That's where it starts. Whenever I like somebody, it makes me want us to become the same person. That's the only way I can satisfy these feelings. I, okay. God, I should just stop talking. I get it. I've had this depth of feeling before. I've never had an interest in drinking people's blood or causing harm, but that level of obsession, I understand. It's almost definitely a mistake though, for just oh so many reasons. But one is that at that point, you've probably identified another person as the, the path of greatest meaning for you. You've gotten a little bit confused where your internal radar for what is the most important thing for you, that internal compass we all have towards like real meaning and being on that exact right slipstream of life towards what we need with like, a person, which is inherently not part of you, not you, can't be you, cannot substitute for your own growth, though you certainly can grow through your experience with other people. The person is not the thing you need. It's very seductive because otherwise it's often very hard to put a tangible name and face or clear plan to what that thing is. It sort of just happens in moments, often seemingly randomly, but a person is like flesh and blood and they have all these things that you love and these traits you admire and the beauty you can see, which really is a mirror of your potential in yourself, but you don't know how to access. So you're focused on them. They become the vehicle for what you need. But even in like the quote unquote attaining of those people as partners or lovers or whatever, you're fundamentally unchanged and worse. You now have one more layer to undo to go back to the beginning to get on the path you need to get on. And that separation is brutal, which further deepens the infatuation. And come here, attack! Brace yourself! Go, go away, we're... So we're dating. Tell me, what do you want to do to me? I wa want to subdue you and put you in jail and leave to fight Shigaraki. This is a terrible matchup. Danger Sense doesn't perceive yeah. her. You know what? Despite it being highly dangerous. To be a copy of All Might, to be as strong as he was. Oh, Dickless Crush is All Might. But I don't want to become him. Don't you see that your actions don't match your feelings? The truth is, the last thing you should want to do is hurt a person you care about! <laughs> can she- oh man, yeah, this is dangerous. If you threaten people so you can do what you want, and you deserve whatever's coming to you! I wonder if Araka would take that one back. You think that the only people worthwhile are heroes and the ones they protect, that I don't matter! That's why you won't give me the time of day. Is she gonna pull out the twice stuff? Uh, wait, let's talk about this! I've been Sweet thinking of her. about you ever since we fought each other one-on-one! -on -one. Aww. It's strange, 
because I don't think about you anymore. It's not very nice. If the world is going to reject me, then I'll reject the world right back. It's really what I was saying earlier. You know, like a lot of it is not just hate. It's a reaction, a poorly formed reaction to something actually that has potential to be really good, which is desire, recognition of beauty, very human needs stuff. If you can't get what you want out of life, you don't see a path forward. You don't believe in yourself to actionably change or sculpt your, your future into getting what you most need out of life. You need something to do, so you turn around and attack something. But in there is often sort of a plea, you know. It's like, if I push far enough, I'll hit something that can withstand me and will notice me and will get back to me. Like, give me some kind of wall or structure or floor to stop the freefall. I'm just so sad, Chaco. <gasps> oh. Maybe we bond over this because we're so similar, you and me. We're both in love with the same. Oh, wow. Suki with the drop kick. Wrecked. We got this. Gravity and I were always supposed Hard to, to leave. Miko Toga. Especially for a meddler. We know how to fight her better than anyone. Put faith in your friends. She's right. And do have history. Stop Shigaraki. <sighs> Tough. I mean, trust in her like she trusted in you. It can no longer be used the same way it was in the past. This is no time to overreact. I don't forget don't. that the future depends on your victory. This is concerning. I don't think Midoriya could ignore her if he stayed. He could not. Besides, I couldn't stand to let her reveal the precious secret you've been hiding. Oh. What a villain. <laughs> what a good friend. I want to live in a way that makes sense to me. Like you, Jean. Uh-oh, we got to stop her from doing this. I don't need heroes. So goodbye. Go off and die somewhere. Not happening. I'm going to take a stand and do whatever I think is right. I have to be true to myself too! Thinking about this in terms of real life, you know what might cure Toga or give her some perspective? Is meeting another Toga who feels that way about her. Then she'd be like, ew, that's how I've been acting? In other words, Mineta. Going back to what I was saying before, I think maybe one of the antidotes is maybe something like localizing, internalizing that understanding of beauty. I'm guessing it's a pretty common phenomenon where it's like really easy to see the greatness in other people and much harder to see it in ourselves. So like I said, other people become the point of fixation because that's where we see it. But if you'd manage to show yourself, not through just like telling yourself to believe in yourself as we're often told, but just gradually through showing up for yourself and doing things you felt are good, racking up small wins repeatedly, seeing what you're capable of, seeing how the hard work you do, the good work you do, actually bears fruit, that lens might start to shift a little bit. And then others become people with whom to share beauty, as opposed to like those to consume for it. One of the telltale signs of that relationship is you are threatened by the person you love, where you, you want to wholly possess them because that gives you some feeling of control. Like it is almost like you're trying to eat them, you're trying to keep them nice and safe, locked in your heart, because it sort of is like trying to add someone as an attachment to your being, to your psyche, which is not possible. Deku, I think, almost as an aside, had it right where, you know, he really loves All Might, adores All Might, as much as anyone's really capable of adoring anyone. But for Deku, that translates to him as his responsibility that he has to do through his own work, through his own merit, to live up to it, rather than sort of attaching himself leech-like to All Might and becoming him, controlling him, trying to get all of that positivity through just All Might's attention. He's able to translate it. He's able to see what really matters, what the source of it is. It's not All Might necessarily. It's the great things about All Might that are fire-like, you know, they could be attained by, by anyone, given sufficient sacrifice and work and dedication etc and then yeah you don't hurt the people you love knowingly you don't deliberately try to control the people that you love if you love someone their greatness is not a threat it's not something to be taken it's something to be celebrated Pogo really needs heroes there were many oh, with, heroes oh the all might such a burning they're dropping like flies <laughs> this is fighting in the sea something about it irritates me that's a sight that takes me back it's a cool shot it's hot no absurdly hot i can't get any closer or my engines will be ruined that sucks keto you need to get further back. You don't have a heat-resistant body like I do. It's not a problem. He's made of paper! I think you have the wrong idea. I'm not standing here because our dad told me I had to. Right, I'm here with my choice. own accord because I want to be the one who stops this madness. Tell you he also dad, has a unique perspective on it. They're brothers. Still acting as dad's perfect pawn. No, that would only be the case if I kept trying to be a hero while ignoring you. Shots fired at Endeavor. Superhuman society has reached an end. You may not see it yet, but it's the truth. Todoroki really is the best choice, for more than the obvious reasons that, you know, they're family. Todoroki is probably the person on the planet that understands Dabi the best. This is my experience, but through all my relationships in a very key and special way, there's nothing close to my relationship with my sister because we have this shared, lived knowledge that other people can understand to a certain extent or certainly understand conceptually, but like, 
we know so deeply and we both know the other knows because we went through roughly the same things, though we're different ages. We each have the deepest possible dive on what we each went through and what we saw the other go through and then lived into adulthood with it and watched ourselves go on parallel paths with that history and with sort of a collective shared origin story. And beyond that, you know, like shared tastes in media and me influencing her and her influencing me in terms of music and games and TV shows, etc. We have a common lexicon. We have shared sense of humor. No one can make me laugh like my sister can make me laugh, which also isn't to glamorize it or say that it's always been good or that everything is good, that there weren't problems or issues. It's just there's a depth of understanding that is, I think, only possible with that level of time spent at a young age with a relative peer. So like Todoroki is the most qualified, more than Endeavor, maybe similar on some level to his other siblings, but especially so because of the power thing and him being his father's next protege. I think there's a common thing forming here between both Dabi and Toga where you got to oppose them. You have to stop them. If you hope for actual internal change, you have to speak their language and you have to realize what they're asking for. The tale of how I became Dabi. The reason I was able to keep living in this hellish world. Why my flames burn so much harder than yours. This is going to be key some other time. <laughs> I guess. We're gonna shelve this one. It's very intriguing though, I'd love to know. I don't know what happened to him. I can only guess. Story-wise, probably all for one. You know, his classic thing of, I understand you. You poor, poor, misunderstood soul. Giving him a sense of utility and meaning and, and purpose for his own selfish ends. Psychologically though, I think it has to be something like total loss of faith, loss of control, perhaps feeling like everything that happens is random and therefore unfair. There's no link between what I do, positive or negative, and outcome. That is often a, a key factor in people's slip, descent into insanity or chaos or evil or whatever. One of the biggest things I've come to think after watching and talking about a lot of these shows is it seems to me there's a very, very strong correlation between how much you can imagine yourself and feel yourself being able to sort of like grip the world and move things in a positive direction towards your, your needs and wants and dreams versus the counterforce of how much you feel you're just at the whim of nature and society and random bad luck and other people who have more things than you. In that light, Shoto actually might be enraging. You know, it's a threat. Shoto is a success in, in key ways. Shoto's healthy. Shoto's not consumed by his fire. Shoto was not broken, but perhaps by that very nature, contains the seeds of what can break Dabi's madness. 